Hello everyone and welcome to my tutorial where I'm going to walk you through how to paint a whale shark using watercolors. For a list of everything you need to get started, be sure to check out the video description below and please hit subscribe if you want to see other videos just like this one. So let's get started. We're going to start off by sketching out the whale shark. So you just want to have a very loose shape of a whale shark. If you have a reference photo online that works or you can just follow along with me. So they have a fairly square nose so you just want to start with that shape and then we're going to move down to the fins like so and the fins are about the width of the body so that's something to keep in mind for your proportions and try to draw fairly lightly i'm drawing a little bit darker than you should just because i want you guys to be able to see it but with watercolor it's important to sketch out very lightly because it's easy to see it through the watercolors after and we don't want that now you can erase it, of course, but it's easier just to not have it there in the first place. So you can see when I'm sketching out, I'm keeping it very loose. I don't worry about getting each line perfect because I plan to go back and redraw some, erase some. Because like I said, if you do draw very lightly, it is e relatively easy to erase. So we'll keep a line down the center that comes up and represents top fin. And then I'm just going to erase some of these as I go so that I can have an idea of whether or not my proportions are looking correct. But that's looking pretty good. Just verifying. This looks a little sharp here, so I'm just going to curve those lines a bit. And then I think that's good. And feel free to pause it here if you need a bit more time to draw it or need time to find a reference photo. That's the beauty of video. Every time I work a little bit fast, you guys can just pause it. All right, so we're just gonna soften a few of these lines. We don't want it to look too sharp. And that's looking pretty good to me. I'm actually, you know what, now that I see it, I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger. There, I think that looks better. All right. So first things first, I'm gonna pick a brush and I think I'm gonna do a round brush for the background. Um, I like the way it gives me the control with the tip to move around the body, but it also allows me to do large swaths of water. All right, so I'm gonna keep the background very loose, make it look like he's swimming in water. And this is a technique you'll become very familiar with, just placing down your water first, called the wet and wet technique, where basically you're taking your watercolors and you're laying them into a pool of water so that they ebb and flow and bleed around. And I'm gonna show you a bit of a technique in this video how to do some watercolor blooms because they look so nice with the undersea creatures when that watercolor just kind of some people call them cauliflower, I call them blooms. Leave a, leave, leave a note in the comments if you have a different name for them, but they're basically where you get those white blooms that seep out. And they're so beautiful with watercolors. I remember when I started out, I used to do them all the time and I didn't mean to, and then I couldn't recreate them. So I've since learned how to recreate them because it's nice to be able to control that process a little bit. So I'm using a teal color I'm keeping it fairly simple. We're just gonna go around the perimeter of the whale shark, adding that teal. And as it dries, it's gonna make its way out to where you have the clear water. So you'll notice as soon as you start laying down that color, if you've missed any areas, you're gonna notice it right away. And I'm using the tip of the brush to control where the watercolor is going. And then I'm gonna slowly start darkening it right near the shark. And then you can help it move around a little bit, but if you want it to move around more, you can create some blooms by taking a, a substantial amount of clear water in your brush and then just dropping it down. And you can see as the water makes its way out, 
starts to create some neat little patterns. And I just keep touching it to the paper. And then if I want it to get bigger, I touch it to the paper again. I want this one to be substantial. You can see the way it's moving around. And then what I do in order to keep it lighter in the center is I soak up some of that water. And we're just gonna use a corner of a very dirty paper towel and get a little bit of that water up. So anywhere where it's nearly dry, you can kind of drop in your brush and add a little bit of variation. So I'm gonna add a bit more clear water here and darken it, darken that teal by adding more. So I'm just going over top, adding a bit more clear water and then adding a bit more paint. So while it's still wet, I'm actually going over top because I'm noticing I want it to be a bit darker over top. Now I'm gonna help it move around. I don't want it to stay too close to the shark. And I'm losing my bloom now that I've done that, I can see. I know sometimes it can be hard to notice that on camera, but I'll add it back. Just like so. And this just helps even it out a bit. And then it's gonna continue to bleed as it dries. And I'm gonna add a bloom right there if I can. It's not doing much today, but. Try again over here. I'm just adding clear water over top. All right, and now I'm gonna take a bit of the Prussian blue. And wherever it's still wet, I'm gonna drop a little bit of the Prussian blue in. And where it's wet, it's gonna bleed out a tiny bit more. And where it's dry, it's gonna stay just teal. So you kind of look at your page at an angle and say, where do I see water still? I can see it's still wet here. I can see it's still wet here. So I can go in and add some more blue here. We've got a lot of blue on that one. That's okay. Just add a bit of clear water with it to help it go out more. And you get the idea, I'm just making my way around for a second coat or third in some places. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my flat brush and I have a brush like this and I put a substantial amount of water in it and then a little bit of pigment with it, a little bit of paint, and I'm gonna add some little splashes. And this is just gonna help it look very watery. I can add them all around. And sometimes they can add some really cool textures as they drip into areas that are almost dry. I like that look. So you wanna keep your brush fairly wet for this. It's gonna take a while for the page to dry, but that's okay. So I'm just having fun with it, making my way around, keeping that really watery look. Oops. We're gonna go over that anyway, so it's not too important to keep it clean. All right, so now we're gonna let this dry and then I'll go back and we'll do the next layer of the actual shark. All right, so now that the background is dry, we can go in and start working on the body of the shark itself. So I'm gonna do it similar to the background. I'm going to fill it all in using my round brush. And for the shark itself, I'm gonna be using a Payne's Gray. It's a 
It's basically black with undertones of blue in it. And so you just kind of quickly fill it in so that it doesn't dry too much as you're going. And having a bit more water helps for this part just because um, we don't want it to dry too much. So little pools of water are okay. We're gonna move them around as we go. So I add quite a bit and then I kind of help it even out by moving my brush along the page, just like so. All right, now we're gonna take a bit of Payne's Gray and I love the way the Payne's Gray bleeds. So you'll see, it's a really nice color. Right now we're just trying to get down quite a bit of color. It doesn't have to be perfectly even. It's gonna even out as it goes. I'm gonna put in some Prussian blue that can mix with the Payne's Gray. Make our way down on the arm, Finn, because whales don't have arms. And when it's not moving around enough, you just add a bit of clear water and help it out. We're wanting to really make sure we're defining the edges here, covering up some of those pencil lines if they're showing still. Then I'm gonna have a nice strong line here so that you can really see the differentiation between the shark and the water. And that's why I'm going with this Payne's Gray, just because if I did straight brush Prussian Blue, I think it would blend in with the background too much. So having them mixed together on the page creates a color that definitely doesn't blend in. And as we darken it too, you'll see more differentiation. So I'm gonna darken certain spots. As it's drying, I'm just continuously adding color till I get it the color I want. And keep in mind, as watercolor dries, it's gonna lighten. So what looks like a good color right now, as it dries, you're probably gonna wanna darken it. And that's totally okay and very normal. You start to learn how much pigment you want on the page to get the end result you want, the more you work with it. I'm adding a bit more clear water to the shark to help it move around a bit. Because if it starts to dry, what you're gonna notice is your paint's not moving around anymore. So I'm going back and forth between Prussian blue and Payne's gray so that I have quite a bit of variation in the color of the shark. And it's approaching the color I want now. So pretty soon I'm gonna stop adding more. And I'm gonna have to go back in and add some of those details that got lost when we went in here. Actually, I'm gonna make this fin a little bit bigger. And so I'm drying off my brush and I'm actually going to bring this color down using a dry brush. All right, so as this dries, like I said, it is gonna lighten. I'm gonna start adding in this line here. And I'll add that top fin in in the next layer. We're gonna move around some of this color a little bit. I'm not loving the way it's kind of staying right there. So what I'm gonna do is take a clean brush, with clean water on it, and just drop in a bit of that clear water and it's gonna force it out. And then I'm gonna try and create 
bit of blooming. I think it might be a bit too wet now, but we'll try anyway. If you add some clear water, you can see here, we're getting a lot more of that effect now with this dark color. You can see it a lot more on the page. And so if we take, if we dry off the brush and soak up some of that water now, we'll notice we end up with a light spot there. And I'd like to do that in a couple of areas just to make it a little bit more interesting. But you gotta pick areas that are nearly dry. So we might have to let some of these set up a bit. So now I'm adding more pigment right now, just, but I'm not adding a lot of water. So I'm keeping my brush fairly dry. All right, so I'm gonna dry this up a little bit, just a tiny bit, and then I'm gonna add a few more balloons. All right, so it's dry enough to keep working on the next coat. So this is the final coat before we go in and add some detail. And that's just trying to get a uh, fin here and a little bit more darkness in certain areas. So I'm gonna add a bit of water here. I'm just doing some select areas to darken this line down the center of the body. So I'm taking clear water. Then I'm gonna take some that Payne's Gray and drop it in. And if you have some little pooling of water already that's still there, that's okay. We're gonna make that line come all the way down. And I'm gonna just dab up this water so that I can go back in. And we're gonna have it come up and down. So we're gonna go up here and then feather down like so. And then the way to get this to smooth out is to take clear water and go like this beside it. That'll blend it in. And it'll start to make more sense as we add some of those details too. Just want to cover up some of these areas that are a little too dark. I mean, sorry, too light. I see this is still wet here. So if I go and add a bit of Payne's Gray on top, that'll darken nicely. So I'm just looking for areas with a bit of water on them. Go in and darken. like so, just defining this edge a little bit. And anywhere where I've defined it too much, like here, you can take clear water and butt it up next to it and it'll blend that in. This is just finessing some of those final details before we go in and add some white. And now lastly, I wanna take a little bit of Payne's Gray and splatter it over top. Because what'll happen is you'll get a bit more texture in the painting, keep it a little looser, a little bit of blue. Anywhere that it's still wet, it'll pick up these little droplets quite nicely. And so I'm gonna let it go outside of the painting a little bit. Do a few out here and then add some clear water with them. And these are a little too dark, so I'm just gonna take a bit of the color off. And now we're gonna let this dry fully and then I'll show you how to do the finishing touches. So now that it's 100% dry, we're gonna go in and add those little spots that go on top. I'm gonna use some poster paint that I have here and a fine tip brush. And we'll just go through and add a whole bunch of spots.
right, so that looks like enough spots. The painting is finished. We're just gonna go ahead and sign it. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed painting along with me. If you have suggestions for other videos, please leave a comment below and have fun with it. Don't be afraid to explore and paint new things. Thanks for watching.